as you guys may or maybe not know, I mean, I feel like a lot of people already know because it's been in the news, it's been covered so, uh, so much. But um, Alec Baldwin was on the set. He was filming for a movie that he was also like a producer of, and he was also like the actor as well. And what happened on set was that they were practicing this one shot, not not shooting shot, but like one shot. And he actually fired the weapon and the weapon actually had like a live bullet inside and it actually went through the director and went through the, um, was it assistant director as well? And uh, the woman was actually, she actually died, but the one, the person that was behind them actually survived. So um, it's been like, I think more than a year now, maybe like a year and a half since that's happened and happened in like, I think in New Mexico. And um, Alec Baldwin actually was formally charged with manslaughter and they're going to go to court. They're going to go to trial and everything. And I wanted to go over some of the uh, the stuff that I found online. We have like the, I think the probable cause affidavit. Is that what we have? I did just want to go through it. And uh, yeah, probable, oh, statement of probable cause. We got this one and because they're actually going to charge two people. They're going to charge Alec Baldwin and then they're also going to charge Gutierrez Reed, uh, which is a woman on set who was supposed to be in charge of like the firearm safety stuff, I think. Um, I have an article here, so we can just we can just read that as well. But I wanted to go through it really quick and just kind of chat about it. And then other than that, we do have some bizarre stuff that I just wanted to get into because there are some weird people out there and there are some crazy people out there and some just really some really just bizarre stories. No, 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 you cannot kill this toy. I don't want him to kill this toy because this is the toy where there's the fish dances. Oh, he already killed it. Oh. Um, background synopsis, so if you guys don't know, we're going to go into it right now. On October 21st, 2021, in the county of Santa Fe, state of New Mexico, a shooting involving a handgun revolver firearm occurred that results in the death of Helena Hutchins, that's the name of the director, and the serious injury of Joel Souza, and I believe he's the assistant director, maybe? The shooting involved a 45 caliber revolver occurred on a western movie set located in rural Santa Fe County, referred to and known as Bonanza Creek Ranch. That's the address right there. On this date being filmed and or rehearsed at this location, it was a film at the time named referred to as Rust. Through interviews, statements, and evidence, it was later learned that defendant Alexander Alec Baldwin, here and after Baldwin, was a lead actor in the film. Through these interviews, statements, and physical evidence, it was also learned that Baldwin was involved in name as the primary producer of the film. Though, oh, through these same statements, interviews, maybe I should wear my glasses. Let's wear my glasses on. I was like, though, through, they, what? What does that say? Uh, Victor Chong, hey, how are you doing today? The whole Alex murder, someone on set with a real gun instead of a prop reminds me of the Brendan Lee incident during the making of The Crow. Uh, what I didn't know, I didn't know they actually used real guns. Like before the Alec uh, Baldwin situation happened, um, I didn't know they used real guns on set. I always thought it was always a prop. Um, yeah, I was just like, wait, don't we have the technology nowadays to make prop guns that look almost like real guns but yeah i don't know they be using real guns and shit but what's really interesting is like how the hell was there a live round in this gun through these statements interviews and evidence it was determined that after lunch on october 21st 2021 the crew production staff camera crew and actors were preparing for a scene set in the church this was not an established rehearsal nor had filming commenced at this point baldwin was seated in what is referred to and appears to be a church on this movie set baldwin was in possession of 45 long cold caliber revolver type firearm uh, Baldwin was in possession of a 45 long cold caliber revolver type firearm, one of a type and kind often used and or seen in on a, a Western genre type movies or on set. The firearm is a single action revolver handgun, which requires the cocking of the exposed hammer. So the hammer is when you go like, chuck, chuck, like that part right there, chuck, uh, which then rotates the cylinder and the pressing of the trigger is required to fire the weapon. So you got to cock it rotate this which rotates the cylinder and then press the trigger okay in front of baldwin standing were victims helena hutchins and joel souza hutchins and souza reviewing and moving a camera for a possible setup for a later scene to occur at a later undetermined date and or time through these statements interviews and physical evidence it was learned that helena hutchins was a director of photography for the film and joel souza oh, was the director writer for the film Information evidence obtained showed that Baldwin was seated in a pew facing in a northerly direction towards the front of the church. In front of him was Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza and a camera operator along with the other crew, sound, script, costume, etc. Baldwin was wearing a shoulder holster, right hand draw, which was securing the holding the 45 long cold caliber, single action six shot revolver. Baldwin was practicing drawing and pointing the weapon for the scene with guidance and instruction from Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza. 
Um, in an interview with Alec, he said he cocked it halfway, let go of the hammer, went off. I feel like it was a horrible accident. I have not seen the interrogation yet. Are you talking about the interrogation or are you talking about just like a regular interview he did on TV? Um, I saw that they released like interrogation videos and I have not seen that yet. Joe Susan, a camera operator. Oh, I think I read that already. Yep. The setup was to be a close up of Baldwin and the firearm as he drew the weapon and pointed it. Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza were viewing the practice scene on a monitor attached to the camera. Baldwin drew the revolver from the holster, pointed at Helena Hutchins, and fired the weapon. When reviewing the script and witness interviews for this particular scene and close up shot, evidence indicates that the scene and shot did not require the weapon to be fired. It was also determined by consultation with expert armorers that in a rehearsal a plastic gun or replica gun should be used as no firing of blanks is required however baldwin fired the single action 45 long colt revolver resulting in the discharge of a projectile that struck and traveled through the right armpit area of helena hudgens exited her back from the omi's official report then struck joel souza in the right shoulder and lodged into his right back at approximately 1.48 p.m., the shooting was reported to Santa Fe County Regional Emergency Communication Center via 911. This resulted in a response of fire, emergency, medical, and Santa Fe County Sheriff Officer po Office personnel. This further resulted in the case number incident being generated. Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office conducted an investigation into the shooting under this case number as a death investigation. Detective Alexander Hancock was assigned as the primary investigator. He didn't put the finger on the trigger, just on the hammer. Felt like they don't test out the props first before actually using it on set. Lol. Yeah, and I want to know what the role was of, because um, we're going to be reading that part next, um, of the person that's in charge of like the, um, what's it called? Of like uh, the gun. The armor? Is that what you call him? The armor? Okay, we're learning stuff. Helena Hutchins, oh, sorry, uh, the response of emergency personnel resulted in Joel Souza being transported by ambulance to this medical center located here within the city limits of Santa Fe. Helena Hutchins was, was transported from the scene by air ambulance helicopter to level one trauma center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Helena Hutchins was pronounced deceased at approximately, approximately 3.37 p.m. by attending medical personnel. Joe Souza was treated and released, but not before a projectile was removed from his back. The projectile appeared to be a lead projectile of the type and kind and kind found in live ammunition this item was secured and turned over to the police department as noted above and confirmed by the evidence and analysis the recovered projectile first struck and then passed through entirely um through helena hudgens and then and then struck joel souza there was no evidence that the bullet ricocheted or struck any objects or person before striking helena hudgens the projectile then penetrated through the front of joel souza's right shoulder and became lodged under his skin on his back the medical examiner um, listed Helena Hutchins' cause of death preliminary as gunshot wound of the chest after conducting an autopsy on October 22nd, 2021. Felt like they don't test out the prop before first for actually using on set. Well, more like before the director says action. Firearm ammunition and Baldwin as actor and shooter. Statement and evidence show Baldwin was not present for required firearm training prior to commencement of filming. Wait, why would he not have to do firearm training? I would think that like anyone that's like going to be touching a real firearm on set would have to go through proper firearm training, right? What do I know? I'm not an actor. Uh, statements, depositions from OSHA and evidence show Baldwin was provided only minimal oh, training on firearms, even after Reed requested more training for Baldwin. So Reed is going to be the other person that's going to be charged as well. So remember that name, Reed. In the deposition taken from Reed, she stated Baldwin had very limited training on the cross draw that was required for the scene on the 21st and limited training in firearms and how to check his own firearm as to whether it was unloaded or loaded. And it's not like Alec Baldwin is a new and upcoming actor. He's been in the acting industry for, I want to say, well over 20 years, even maybe even more than that. 
and limited training in firearms and how to check his own firearm as to whether it was unloaded or loaded, in which Reed felt like it was very important in his past in his role as Russ. A training session for at least an hour or more in length was scheduled, but the actual training consisted of only 30 minutes as according to Reed. Baldwin was distracted and talking on his cell phone to his family during the training. Baldwin approached responding deputies on the day of the shooting, wanted to talk to them because he was the one who fired the gun. He was referred to and later interviewed by detectives. Photo and evidence from inside the church on the day of the shooting shows some of the rehearsal. Uh, wait, did I read this one? Oh, here it is. Baldwin later asserted that he never fired the revolver and that it had just gone off. Baldwin made this assertion public as well. Oh, this is what you guys were talking about in the chat earlier. In multiple media interviews conducted after the shooting, many media interviews and law enforcement interviews were conducted by Baldwin. He displayed very inconsistent accounts of what happened during the incident when firing the gun that killed Hutchins. Photo and video in evidence from inside the church and on the day of the shooting show some of the rehearsal up to and including the moments before the shooting. The photos and videos depict the above described actions of Baldwin prior to the shooting, practicing drawing and pointing the weapon. The photos and videos clearly show Baldwin multiple times with his finger inside of the trigger guard and on the trigger while manipulating the hammer while drawing, pointing and holstering the revolver. Oh, the actor is meant to check the weapon after Brandon Lee. Man, putting that much responsibility on an actor. I guess like as like a secondary like step, right? So you have like the armory person checks it and the actor checks it afterwards just to make sure. Am I the only one thinking that Baldwin shouldn't have talked to the police? Um, He probably shouldn't have done interviews, honestly. I feel like when stuff like this happens, whenever you do the interviews, the interviews are the ones that they kind of go through and look at, you know, and they bring it back to the court. And was like, hey, look, but you said this, you said that, and this is inconsistent. But yeah, I mean, I get it. Like he wants to do the interview to set the record straight or whatever. But I just feel like doing interviews is just not a good idea. Like what did we learn about Meg the Stallion when she did the interview, right? Like just not a good idea, right? Look at this guy. He just busted into my room. Well, well, well. He's like, you know what? I'm coming in here. I don't care what she say. I mean, you can stay here, Steve. You just can't be doing your squeaky squeaky thing. The revolver involved in the shooting was seized by detectives as evidence. It was later submitted to the FBI crime lab for examination and analysis. As part of the examination analysis, the FBI conducted a function malfunction check of the revolver. This involved trying to get the weapon to fire without the trigger being depressed, i.e. striking the hammer at various multiple angles against a solid object and striking the hammer of the revolver with an actual hammer mallet the revolver did not malfunction fire when it shouldn't have accidentally this analysis clearly showed the weapon could not accidentally fire for the weapon to fire the trigger would have to be depressed and pressed so this is going to go against what alec baldwin said in the interview right you guys were saying that he said that like oh he never actually pressed the trigger he only cocked it the analysis additionally included testing of and documentation of the sear and engagement points of the hammer as it is moved from the position of at rest all the way down against the frame in its lowest position. Through each engagement of the single action hammer mechanism, the firearm possessed one fourth and half cock position safeties and were found to function as designed, keeping the hammer from striking the cartridge primer without pulling the trigger. Additionally, at half cock, the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I knew I knew someone in my chat was gonna say something, and I preemptively laughed. Okay, uh, your dog is the same. Has three beds. Refuses to use any one of them. I, I hear for cats, what you're supposed to do if you get a new bed, um, you're supposed to put your clothes on it to make it like smell like you, and it'll go to it more. But I don't know if that is for the dog. Listen, listen. I thought you guys were gonna say something stupid, and I preemptively just laughed. Okay, even though your jokes would have been corny anyway. Shut up. Uh, James says that type of gun has a double click camera. Then you pull the trigger. Um, that's the issue here. He never had any firearm experience, so he wouldn't have known. Uh, Mark Wood, hello. If it's only a prop and it only has blanks in it, would it still be called fired? And why would he need training if it's only a prop with blanks in it? No, it was a real gun. So like what I didn't know was that um, in movie sets, they use real guns sometimes. Uh, sometimes they want the real thing. They want it to be like, you know, as authentic as possible because i always just thought like oh of course they use fake guns i didn't know they use real guns but yeah sometimes they use real guns in it now the question is um why was there a a live round in there but i don't know if it's gonna get into that we'll get there let's see what it says
Okay, additionally at half cock, the cylinder is was partially rotated, making it impossible for the hammer and the attached firing pin to strike a primer. The FBI additionally analyzed various types and kinds of ammunition seized from the scene, including the prop truck. This included dummy rounds blank rounds, and suspected live ammunition. A total of five suspected live rounds, one spent casing of a live round that was discharged, causing the shooting, the shooting or seized by investigators. Evidence and statements indicate that aside from what Hannah Gutierrez read, the Armour Rust production, so again, she's been charged as well, and right now they're like pointing their fingers at each other. She's pointing her finger at Alex Baldwin, Alex Baldwin's pointing his fingers at her may have brought to the set with her. All weapons and ammunition, blank dummy for the production, were obtained from a supply company in Albuquerque. Detectives investigated these facts, including service of a search warrant at a place of business of PDQ Arms and Props in Albuquerque, who was the supplier of the dummies and blanks to Russ. Several suspected live rounds of 45 long cold caliber. Okay, so I'm not a gun person, so let's, let's look this up really quick. Let's learn, guys. Dummy round. A dummy round or drill round is a round that is completely in or inert, so it means it can't move, contains no primer, propellant, or explosive charge. It is used to check weapon function and for crew training. Dummy ammunition is distinct from practice ammunition, which may contain smaller than normal amounts of propellant and or explosives. Dummy is not to be confused with the blank, a cartridge for a firearm that contains propellant and a primer, but no bullet or shot. Okay, so... This is a dummy round, completely inert, no primer, propellant, or explosive charge. A blank is a firearm cartridge that, when fired, does not shoot a projectile like a bullet or pellet, but it generates a muzzle flash and an explosive sound like a normal gunshot would. Firearms may need to be modified to allow a blank to cycle the action. The shooter experiences less recoil with the blank than with a live round. Blanks are often used in prop guns for shooting simulations that have no need for ballistic results, but still demand light and sound effects. Okay, so blank dummy. There we go. Learning a little bit here. Let's go back. Several suspected live rounds of the 45 long cold caliber cartridges were seized as a result. Um, as a result, some supplied by the company owner to investigators and some found at the place of business. These rounds were submitted to the FBI for comparison with the suspected live rounds found at the shooting scene. That's the thing I'm just wondering. Why were there live rounds at the shooting scene? That's what I want to know. Corgi versus bleep in court would be a hilarious trial. I would win. What do you mean? I would global humiliation for bleep. <laughs> they would give me a booster seat. Mm, talk, talk for yourself, okay? Uh, production team were firing live rounds on the set. I think I heard about that too as well. Uh, whatever happened to the use of CGI and not use actual live rounds to break glass and objects? Low. Uh, Brandon Lee was killed by a dummy round stuck in the barrel or a blank in the barrel, I think. Oh, actually, we could just look that up really quick, right? Lee, who was the son of a martial artist, uh, Bruce Lee, died after his co-star actor Michael Massey fired at him with a prop gun during filming in 1993. Although the revolver was loaded with blanks, the gunpowder in the blank cartridge ignited, leading Massey to unknowingly fire a bullet fragment at Lee, who later died in surgery. Oh my goodness. So even with like a blank, um, and there was like gunpowder in there, um, did not face any charges. Jesus. Scary, huh? The explosive chemistry examination of the round showed that the smokeless powder in the live rounds found in the scene did not match the live rounds seized from the props arm supplier in question. This means the live rounds on Russ did not match the rounds explosive chemistry taken from the PDQ arms and props. The FBI lab determined that five suspected live rounds were recovered at the scene of the shooting were indeed live rounds, each possessing an unfired primer, powder and bullet as part of the cartridge. These five rounds were find by the, found by the detectives and a crime scene technician while processing the scene. 
The five unfired rounds were found in the following location. One, from the SFSL Lieutenant Benavides patrol vehicle that he seized from Reed upon his arrival. Two, from the top of the armorer's cart, including the one spent live round casing. One, from the bandolier on the cart. One, from the Baldwin holster located inside the church. And one, from the ammunition box located in the armorer's cart. Along with the casing and fired projectile, there were a total of six 45 live rounds that were discovered in various locations on the rust set. There is that one scene in Crow where the protagonist is um, FCK as his powers were out. Part of me always wants to believe they kept that one scene when he got shot. Uh, Victor says Brendan's really tall. Whenever he does high kicks, always got me laughing because his opponents in the scenes always got big booted. <laughs> Sounds like Texas, they cancel crap over half an inch of snow. I mean, I think it's because maybe you guys don't get snow as often and you're not prepared for it. Like you don't have enough salt to salt the roads or maybe your road conditions are pretty crap. Like, I don't know. But on the East Coast, it's like <laughs> snow, six foot, whatever. Come to work, guys. <laughs> Make it into work. <laughs> I had a shirt that I gave back to my friend. I shouldn't have given it back to her, but uh, I gave it back to her. It had like, the, it was like old school W characters of like everyone. I should just buy it on eBay. I bet you can just buy it myself. We're gonna go find it. It was such a sick ass shirt, man. Super dope. Six 45 live rounds were discovered in various locations of the rust set. Evidence further shows that Baldwin as an actor has an extensive experience in the film industry involving firearms. Failed to demand at least two safety checks between the armorer and himself and witnessing the handling of firearms by a first assistant director. Standard pro oh, we get to learn about standard protocol. Okay, standard protocol is the armorer is to show the firearm, show the actor the firearm, okay? Pull the bullets out in front of the actor, okay? And demonstrate there are no live rounds but dummies in the firearm. Baldwin knows this is standard safety protocol as he has mentioned it in media interviews. God, why did he do interviews? And in law enforcement interviews. Hannah Gutierrez Reed, hereafter Reed, did not do this protocol in front of Baldwin. Baldwin did not object to this action. Reed discusses in her interviews with Asha and law enforcement this should have occurred. Reed also acknowledges in her interviews that she should have been in the church with a firearm at all times. Wait, when they were filming this scene, did Baldwin not tell Reed about this? Was she not privy to this at all? Because she's, she's basically saying like, oh yeah, like I know I should have been there. Oh, snaps. Let's see what happens. Instead, she left the church while Baldwin was in possession. Oh, she left the church. Ooh. The way that's worded sounds like she knew, but she left. Okay. While Baldwin was in possession of a firearm in cloak's proximity to the cast and crew, Baldwin further acknowledges that his standard protocol for armorers to stay with the firearm at all times in the media interviews. Ooh. Finally, Baldwin direct. <laughs> it was a large slumping noise i was like what the fuck i always okay i have this like fear that someone's living in my attic ever since i climbed into my attic once it was very scary by the way i was crawling through my attic and i found like beer bottles and like water bottles up there and i was like oh my god dennis i think they're and it was so scary because i was up there by myself and i thought they were gonna like, pop out and like kill me or something and like quickly crawled out of there and i came back i was like oh my god dennis there's like shit up there but he was like oh i think when people were just working on roof or something they were probably just having a drink and just left their stuff in there because it wouldn't make sense how they would like would they come out at night and like eat stuff from my refrigerator i wouldn't notice things were missing right anyway Anyways, so Steve just dropped his bone and it's like really loud. Uh, Crow is a decent movie. Just watch the first one and that's about it. What year did Crow come out? Hi, Bernice. How are you doing today? I like the Bushwhackers. I don't know if I remember that. Andre the Giant. I remember there's a lot of like, I remember Sting, definitely. Ch China, definitely. Um, uh, Andre the Giant? Mm, the Hulk, definitely. I don't know. There's a lot of wrestlers I don't uh, remember. Oh, one of my favorites, though. Who was the, um, not the Sting. There's like a really big guy. Oh, the uh, 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 Under, Under, Underworld? Underworld? Underworld. He was really cool. I watched this as a kid, but I don't remember The Crow. Um, you were a little. Yeah, I might have seen it when I was a kid, too. I remember that one film. There was like a really lanky, skinny man lived in the man's walls and comes out at night to take revenge on it by putting his toothbrush in the toilet and such. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. My uh, my siblings said that. 
um they i i you know like i didn't really do anything like we had like a like you know like your typical shitty mom's boyfriend right living with us and like i never really did anything like that but like my siblings told me that they would like steal like 20 dollars from him or they would like put his like toothbrush in the toilet i'm like what the fuck guys damn like i thought i was like i thought i was the bad one the undertaker oh my god i'm sorry guys undertaker how did i mess up that name yeah undertaker Kane, yeah, dude, it was so fun watching wrestling. One of my favorite things to watch it was the um, what's the wrestling one where they're all like made out of like clay? What was that one called again? Oh, so good. It was like celebrity death. Oh, is it celebrity death match? Oh man, it was so fun. Gotta love that. Hold on a second. Finally, Baldwin directly pointed a firearm at Hutchins and Souza. Whether guided by her directions or not, Baldwin knew the first rule of gun safety is to never point a gun at someone you don't intend on shooting. In addition, always assume a gun is loaded. Had Baldwin performed the required safety checks with the armorer, Reed, this tragedy would not have occurred. In addition, if Baldwin had not pointed the gun at Hutchins and Souza, this tragedy would not have occurred. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't know what the protocol is for when they are just, like, practicing a shoot, though. You know what I mean? Because, like, it was in the direction of, like, where the where they were. But, like, are you not supposed to... Like, how do you practice a scene, I guess? This reckless deviation from known standards and practice and protocol directly caused a fatal shooting. Like, what is, what is Alex Baldwin's defense going to be? Do we already have, like... We already know that he said that, like, oh, he didn't actually pull the trigger and then, like, something just happened. But, like, what, what's his defense going to be? I'm very curious. By not receiving the required fire, uh, required training on firearms, deviating from the required duties of checking the firearm with the armor, letting the armor leave the church against protocol, deviating from the practice of only accepting the firearm from the armor, not dealing with the safety complaints on the set, not making sure the protocol of the safety meetings was occurring, putting his finger on the trigger of a real gun, not using a replica firearm for the unscheduled rehearsal, and pulling the gun at Hutchins and Souza and the overall handling of the farm in a negligent manner. Baldwin acted with a willful disregard of the safety of others in a manner that endangered other people, specifically Hutchins and Souza. Baldwin clearly should have known the danger of his actions, which led to the death of Hutchins. Man, that is uh, um, Baldwin as producer. Industry standards, best, best practices, common practices, historical practices, policies, and or producers procedures, sorry, not producers, and the union guide policies and or procedures require and or mandate several members of the filming crew have assume or assigned certain obligations and responsibilities. Expert, industry expert and or armorer were consulted for information and evidence in this industry. Baldwin asserted and is clearly shown to be the producer on this particular film. Based on his position, Baldwin, through acts and or omissions, contributed to or failed to mitigate or address multiple significant safety violations, issues, and or concerns that resulted in multiple noted instances of recklessness leading up to, contributing to, and causing the shooting. Since the shooting, Baldwin has asserted publicly that he is an expert in the realm of firearms and filmmaking. Investigations reveal that Baldwin has been involved in at least 40 films or TV productions. Oh, because I was wondering how many of them involve firearms. 40 of them um, that involve firearms with Baldwin either directly handling or firing a weapon or in a scene with firearms being directly handled and or fired by someone else. Further investigation, this list revealed a multitude of instances, either from the movie itself or the movie poster showing Baldwin with his finger in the trigger guard and on the trigger in instances where according to industry standards and common fire safety standards, it should not have been. Experts, industry standards, and basic firearm safety protocols and training consider this reckless behavior requiring immediate remediation. Evidence shows Baldwin failed to appear for mandatory firearms training and firearm safety training prior to filming. Evidence also shows Baldwin requested and was afforded a training session on set and through the statements in the training that was estimated to be 30 minutes in length due to the distraction of him talking to his family on his cell phone during the training. Um, the onset and limited time of training does not comport. Comport? I've never heard of that word before. What is it comport? Comport. Comport? I've heard of purport. Comport. Conduct oneself. Behave. Yeah, bleep. Comport yourself. <laughs> uh, does not comport to industry standards and evidence shows Baldwin was in charge, was in a position to manage, oversee, commence, and require safety training to industry standards. Baldwin's failure to ensure minimum standards were met is considered reckless in the industry. 
Basic firearm safety protocols and industry standards are provided during this training, which includes basic firearm safety rules and mindset, including but not limited to. I mean, honestly, though, like, because like, let's say, for example, right, he only did 30 minutes of training and he was actually distracted, he was on the phone of his family. I guess like, is he the one that has like the, is he like at the top of the, the food chart, uh, the food chain, I guess, because like, wouldn't there be other people that would call him up and be like, hey, like, we're not going to move forward with this unless you take this shit seriously. Like, I guess like, no, right? Maybe not. Like, who was the person doing the training? Couldn't they just be like, oh, you know what? Like, since you're not taking my training seriously, I'm not going to certify you to let you continue to do with this scene, right? Like, couldn't they have done something like that? I don't know. Talking about my butt here. Um, basic firearm safety protocols and industry standards are provided during this training, which includes basic firearm safety rules, mindset, including but not limited to touching, pressing the trigger until the shooter's ready to fire and is sure of his or her target, treating all firearms if they are loaded and not covering anything with the muzzle of a firearm the shooter is not willing to destroy. The evidence clearly indicates that Baldwin recklessly ignored these rules on multiple occasions, resulting in a fatal shooting. The evidence shows that the production company hired Reed as the lead armorer for the production. Evidence shows that Reed possessed Huh? No certification or certifiable training or union card for this practice? And that she admitted she was the armorer for only one film prior to this production approximately in April of 2021. Wait, what? Don't do you not need certification or something? Okay, so she does not have no certification, no certifiable training or union card for this practice. And that she admitted she was the armorer for only one film prior to the production. I mean, if she was an armorer for a film prior Maybe you don't need to have like the certification thing, but um, okay. As the producer of the firearm intense film, evidence shows that Baldwin allowed through acts or omissions, the hiring of inexperienced and unqualified Reed for this production. What was the other movie that she worked on? Do we get to find out? Because she worked on a film prior. Was it like just like a small indie film or something that like, like what kind of film was it? I want to know, I want to know. Uh, failed to mitigate or establish more precautions to protect against reads and experience or failed to demand the minimum safety standards, protocols, and required requirements on set. Reed was assigned by production to be an assistant prop master in addition to her armor duties. Evidence shows this result in Reed not focusing her entire attention on her primary responsibility as armorer. Evidence shows Baldwin violated industry standards and practices by allowing this reckless and generally prohibited practice resulting in reckless action taking place prior to and or the day of the shooting. Evidence shows that Sarah Zachary was hired as the prop master for the production. It also shows that she was assigned to assist Reed with her armory duties. Man, were they on like a tight budget? Evidence and statements show that Sarah Zachary possessed two... What? Sarah Zachary possessed little or no experience with firearms, firearm safety, and armor duties and responsibility. It also shows that Sarah Zachary was assigned to allow to load and unload ammunition and firearm, handle firearms, and act as an armor when on set with actors, doubles, taking possession of the firearms. What the? What is going on on this set? Evidence shows this was done multiple times and without Reed being on set as well. Evidence shows that despite the production team's awareness of the safety issues, Baldwin did not address this reckless process and procedure that is contrary to industry standards and safety protocols and commonly understood firearm safety procedures. I want to know what his defense is. I, I want to know what he's going to say about all this. Prior. To the shooting incident, Sarah Zachary had a negligent discharge while handling a revolver intended to be used by an actor in the filming. The weapon was not Baldwin's weapon, but had similar same mechanical functions and appearance, single action revolver, and was intended for use by the marshals. Statements show that Sarah Zachary was holding and manipulating the weapon while walking and discharge a blank cartridge to the ground next to her foot. Industry standards practice and protocol consider negligent discharges reckless in nature that require immediate action and or swift mediation up to and including remedial training, demotion, removal from the set, termination, etc. Evidence shows Baldwin failed to address this reckless situation or to direct Reed to mitigate the or address this situation. Did, any, did everyone know about this? I mean, I would say, like, if Alec Baldwin was only just the actor, you know, just some dumb, dumb actor, just, like, you know, on the film set, like, okay, maybe not as much responsibility should be on him. But he was, like, the, the one of the producers. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Also, prior to the shooting incident, another negligent... What? Wait, there was other incidents that happened on set? Okay, other... There's another one. Another negligent discharge was committed by a double, a stunt double as he was handling or manipulating a lever action period rifle loaded and left unattended with the stunt performer while holding, uh, while in a holding tent. 
Baldwin failed to act, the evidence shows, to address this reckless situation or to direct Reed to mitigate or address a negligent discharge. Jesus. Through evidence and interviews, these reckless and serious safety violations were deemed negligent by the investigators as there's no indications or evidence that the firearms in question malfunctioned at any time. Rather, there was evidence the weapons fired because of mishandling or misused by those handling of the firearm, i.e. pressing the trigger when it should not have been. In his producer, yeah, what do producers do? Is that just a name title? Like, it's just like, hey, I'm a producer of this, you know? This makes me look good. Like, what, what are producers, <laughs> what are their responsibilities? Welcome back. The union people gaveling a field day with this case. There were some complaints from the other um, staff. She was a scab. The budget was slim, so they had to get who they could. Money guy and hiring. <coughs> okay, so let's find out what his uh, producer position entails. The evidence indicated Baldwin also did not act to address the lack of daily safety meetings that are required to be conducted by the first assistant director. Evidence indicates that on or about 13th day of filming, the only three or four safety meetings were conducted by the assistant director. Practice and standards investigated indicate that a daily safety meeting could, should be conducted with a crew, regardless of the scenes for the day's shoot. The lack of meetings and the lack of appropriate content of said meetings resulted in a climate of recklessness as evidenced by the conduct of the cast and crew documented through the statements and evidence i wonder if like maybe like gun safety was just not really like taken seriously in hollywood like how often were there movie sets or tv show sets where they were supposed to go and follow protocol and a lot of them just didn't because like you know for this lack of like you know maybe they didn't have time or maybe the actor actresses were running late and they just wanted to just harp and just like roll through it like i wonder if this was just like a known practice in hollywood or like if this was just really a straight up shit show you know in addition, no safety meeting was conducted on the day of the incident. Safety meetings were supposed to be listed on the call sheet daily, but were not. Meetings were called randomly throughout the day with no mandatory attendance required. The meetings were impromptu. <laughs> These meetings should, pursuant to standard protocols, be conducted in the morning prior to the beginning of the day where all the members of the cast and crew should be required to attend. Oh, safety concerns, commute times, and distances pay and other issues. On October 21st, a new crew was brought in to begin filming right away. Evidence indicates that during the church scene in question, the director and the director of photography should have been outside of the church viewing the scene from a large monitor. Oh, yeah, because I was like, interesting. So they shouldn't have even been like close to Alec Baldwin. Interesting. Okay, so they should have been outside the church viewing the scene from a large monitor covered by a tent or shade screen, commonly referred to the video village. Statements indicate that Joel Susan and Helena Hutchins decided to be in the church with the camera crew due to the abrupt change of the camera crew. Evidence indicates that Baldwin failed to act to address any safety or continuity concerns with the new crew, causing a reckless situation to occur on the day of the shooting. Man, what the shit? On the day of the shooting, evidence and statements showed that impromptu plans were made to rehearse and then shoot a scene inside the church, and for this particular scene, it was to only involve... Baldwin. Evidence and statements show that the first assistant director, David Halls, here and after Halls, was present on the set. As with Baldwin, evidence, common standards, protocol, and statements show that Halls was, has the additional duty of safety coordinator by virtue of his position. However, that position does not afford the handling or the manipulation of firearms. Evidence and statements also shows that Halls, by virtue of his position, is the first point of contact for an armorer when they bring a firearm on set and is the first person required to conduct a safety check with the armor and weapons. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. Industry standards and procedures require that the armorer in the presence of the first director show the weapon is clear. Okay, so, so Halls, right? Halls is, has an additional duty of being a safety uh, coordinator, okay? It's the first point of contact for the armorer when they bring the firearm on set, first person required to conduct a safety check. Okay. Uh, now, in the presence of the first assistant director, uh, the they have to show that the weapon is clear and safe. If applicable, show the firearm is loaded with blanks or dummy rounds visually and physically checking each round individu individually for safety by pulling each round out for the firearm and showing that the first assistant director and the actor. The first assistant director then follows the cue of the armor 
calling cold or hot weapon on set, then broadcasting the statement across the radio, which notifies all cast and crew. Evidence clearly shows it's not occur on the day of the shooting at least two times. Baldwin failed to address these reckless incidents and deviations from industry standards and firearm safety rules, directly contributing to the fatal shooting. Halls did not adequately check the firearm with Reed prior to handling it to Baldwin, who additionally did not check it with the armor of Reed. Yeah, because Reed wasn't even there. So Reed wasn't even there. But Halls was there. Halls is further required to announce to the crew when a firearm will be fired on the scene, announcing fire in the hole or other common phrases to put the crew on notice for shooting or loud noises. The evidence statement shows that this requirement did not meet safety or industry standards and further shows that Baldwin failed to address and or mitigate this reckless and dangerous practice. It's official. Wasn't there a stat on there being less than 10 negligent discharges on movie sets in the past 50 years? I forgot where I heard that. Yeah, apparently it doesn't happen often. Um, so like maybe usually they're very tight about their procedures and on this movie set, it was just like a shit show or something. <laughs> but I did hear something about that too, Joe. Not the exact numbers, but I heard that like it doesn't happen very often. All right, what else is there? Halls, again, by virtue of this position of industry standards and practices, is prohibited and or strictly discouraged from handling any of the firearms on the set. As such, industry standards, practices, blah, 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 call for the armorer to be on the set and to stay on the set any time a firearm is on set. This practice was not conducted on the day of the shooting. It was allowed by Baldwin. Prior to lunch, um, can I say Essany? Essany showed that Halls requested Baldwin's firearm be prepped and brought to the set by the armor Reed. Reed states that she loaded the firearm with dummy rounds prior to lunch, so she didn't perform a second safety check on her own or with holes and the firearm, just showing him the barrel and not removing the bullets to show the firearm was safe. Then holes took possession of the firearm from Reed. Reed departed the church. I wonder if it was like of her own volition. Halls provided Baldwin with the firearm so he could rehearse and practice with the weapon. However, there are contradictory statements that Reed brought an empty gun to Halls and at some point loaded it with dummy rounds while in the church. Reed then showed Halls the firearm. Again, Reed did not provide a proper safety check with Halls or Baldwin. Reed then left the church. Reed leaving the set and Hulls handling the firearm are considered very reckless actions according to industry standards, expectations, and common firearm safety protocols and considerations. There is no evidence. Okay, so this basically answers my question because like if something like this barely happens in on movie sets, then it must mean that like they usually follow the procedures to the T. Like they're usually very strict with this. And this whole shit show on this movie set is just something that's like <laughs> They're probably just like, this is unheard of. This is baffling. Uh, there's no evidence or information that Baldwin addressed or acted to mitigate these reckless actions. In addition for a rehearsal or rubble, bleh, bleh, or rubble, bleh, bleh, I can't say that, or rubber or replica firearms should have been used. Only when the actual scene was to be filmed should the weapon have been loaded with dummy rounds. Baldwin, Halls, and Reed all knew this was safety protocols. Man, seems like there's uh, many points of uh, failure here. It was supposed to be empty. Further evidence and statements show that when the crew took a break for lunch, firearms, including Baldwin's, were secured in the prop truck safe. Outside, wait, uh, when, the the, when the crew took lunch for lunch, firearms, including Baldwin's, were secured in the prop truck safe. Okay. Outside the church was a cart used by the armorer and the prop master, contrary to the safety standard protocol. That contained leather gear, rigs like holsters, belts, and ammunition. Evidence clearly indicates this cart and associated items were not secured during the break and was not in visual range of Reed or Sarah Zachary for safety and security. The unsecured cart with equipment, ammunition, and firearms is considered very reckless by industry standards and by common fire safety standards and protocol. Evidence indicates that Baldwin failed to address, uh, to act to address and or mitigate these serious and reckless safety violation. So they were not secured during break time. Upon returning from lunch, evidence and statements ENS show that Reed retrieves Baldwin's preferred revolver, but Reed does not perform another safety check. Additionally, 
Reed again is asked and then complies with Halls by handing him the firearm once in inside the church. There is also contradictory statements that Reed brought in the firearm empty, showed it to Halls, and ultimately later loaded it with dummy rounds. Regardless, the evidence is consistent that Reed failed to show Halls each dummy round and pull them out for safety, nor did Halls request it. Reed did not show Baldwin the loaded firearm either, or did he request to see the rounds, which is safety uh, standard protocol. Reed left the church. Evidence and statements. I mean, I feel like I'm just reading this. They're just copying and pasting this. Okay. I feel like I'm just reading this again, but it's basically what we read earlier. Uh, Reed left the church. Evidence and statements also indicated that after an after lunch safety check, the firearm to industry standards between Reed and Halls did not occur. This after lunch sequence of events is documented to have no less than four extremely reckless violations of industry standards, safety protocol, best practices, and common firearm safety protocols in a very short, compressed period of time. I wonder if they can order Alex Baldwin. Like, I don't know. Do you think they're going to be able to tell him, like, okay, you're not allowed to ever be in a film that handles firearms ever again? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, he's probably going to be fined heavily, and maybe he wouldn't even want to. But, I mean, can they tell him to, like, hey, you can't be in a film and, like, handle firearms? Because look at what you did here. Or, like, you can't, be, you can't be producing no more, man. Or, I don't know. You think they can happen, Matt? That's a serious question. I actually don't know. On the day of the shooting alone, evidence shows that no less than a dozen acts or emissions of recklessness occurred in the short period, short time prior to lunch at the time of the shooting. Because it doesn't sound like this was just like one thing that happened that led to a tragedy. It sounds like it's a bunch of really bad shit. But like I said, I want to see what Alec Baldwin says and let's see what his defense team puts up. Uh, this doesn't include the reckless handling of the firearm by Baldwin. Baldwin, by act or omission or failure to act in his position as a producer, directly contributed and or failed to mitigate numerous reckless and dangerous actions during a very short time period. Finally, industry standards, protocols, and common firearm safety procedures on movie sets require the armor, after conducting the safety check with the first assistant director, to conduct a second safety check with the actor to be handling the firearm. This reckless violation of standards and fire safety occurred two times leading up to the shooting, and Bolton failed to act or mitigate and blah, blah, blah. The reckless deviation from known standards and practice protocol directly caused a fatal shooting. Baldwin acted with di reckless disregard and or more than mere negligence in this incident. Baldwin acted with willful disregard for the safety of others and in a manner that endangered other people and he clearly should have known the danger of his actions would lead to the death of Hutchins. Furthermore, Baldwin handled the weapon in a negligent manner. Evidence exists to clearly show that on October 21st, 21, Helena Hutchins was killed when Baldwin fired a firearm that he pointed at her. The evidence and statements documented in this affidavit confirm many bold instances of extreme reckless acts or reckless failures to act by Baldwin in a 10-day period. Evidence shows clearly shows that none of the incidents or issues were addressed by Baldwin in his position as an actor or producer to further mitigate further occurrences of recklessness, correct reckless behavior, or correct training deficiencies. Uh, you work in Hollywood as a set medic. Producers required to provide a safety set for employees. He did not do that. You hear someone's Samsung phone? You do? <laughs> I don't even hear it. I feel like I just tune it out now. Always be tuning that out. Uh, Baldwin's deviation from known standards, uh, la la la, directly caused the fatal death of Hutchins by not receiving the required training on firearms, not checking the firearm with the armor, letting the armor leave the firearm in the church without being present, deviating from the practice of only accepting the firearm from the armor, not dealing with the safety complaints on set and or making sure safety meetings were held, putting his finger on the trigger of a real firearm when a replica or rubber gun should have been used, pointing the firearm at Hutchins and Souza, the overall handling of the firearm in a negligent manner, Baldwin acted with willful disregard with the safety of others in a manner that endangered other people, specifically Hutchins and Souza. Baldwin clearly stripped down the danger of his actions but led to the deaths of Hutchins. Oh, man. Defense attorney Luke Nikas. Probable cause exists that Baldwin committed involuntary manslaughter contrary to and defined in da 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 manslaughter in the commission of a lawful act which might produce death in an unlawful manner or without due caution or circumspection or during the unlawful act of not amounting to a felony to wit negligence use of a deadly weapon. Sheesh. All right. We'll keep an eye on this. Um, we also have this right here, but it might be might just be the same thing so this is for so again two people were charged with um manslaughter alec baldwin and the armorer um her name what's her name again reed gutierrez reed hannah gutierrez reed 
This one is nine pages, but... Okay. Evidence and statements clearly indicate that Gutierrez Reed loaded the firearm, provided to the set, secured it for lunch, and then again provided it for set for use. Evidence clearly shows that none of the incidents or issues were addressed by Gutierrez Reed in her position as armor to mitigate further occurrences of reckless recklessness, correct reckless behavior, correct training deficiencies. Reed's deviation from known standards, practice, and protocol directly caused the fatal death of Hutchins by not insisting Baldwin had the proper training. I think she said that she was insisting and it still didn't happen. Not checking the rounds she was loading into the firearm. Not showing Halls or Baldwin each bullet before handing them the firearm. Allowing live rounds on the scene. Not staying in the church with the firearm. Here's the thing though. Um... I'm just so confused. Like, even though she lacks the experience and this is like her second movie set that she worked on, I would assume that like if you were doing training to become an armor on a movie set, your training would be so rigorous and it would be like drilled and ingrained in you to follow all these protocols. And if someone wasn't following them, then you'd probably just walk off the set, right? You'd probably just be like, you know what? I don't want to be in this. Like, I don't want to be responsible for this shit if you guys aren't even going to like follow the proper protocols. But... Yeah, I don't know. I wonder what she's going to say, too. Because all I know is that she said that she insisted. Um, she told Baldwin to, like, get more training. He didn't listen to her. And then, like, he, like, didn't listen to anything else that she said. I don't know. That's all I remember. Not seeing the church with a firearm. Allowing Baldwin to point the firearm at Hutchins. Not voicing her concerns to management or her double duties as armor and props assistant. Allowing ammunition to not be secured. Not making sure a rubber or replica weapon was used in a rehearsal scene. And allowing Baldwin to handle a firearm in a negligent manner. Reed acted with willful disregard for the safety of others. Whew. In a manner that endangered other people, specifically Hutchins and Sousa. Reed clearly should have known the danger for actors would lead to the death of Hutchins. So, yeah, same thing. Shame, shame thing. All right, we will see what happens uh, with this.